diagnosis of chronic constipation, what is new? Chronic constipation is a common complaint encountered in multiple clinical practice setting. Symptoms, it includes fewer than three bowel movement, hard stool, straining with defecation, manual evacuation, sensation of incomplete evacuation, and sensation of anorectal obstruction. According to the room three criteria, classification of constipation into chronic inertia, outlet obstruction, and functional constipation, the diagnostic modalities of chronic constipation include step one, which is the primary assessment, and then empirical treatment of high fiber diet and increased fluid intake plus exercise. The, uh, then we shift to the primary testing for general classification of the uh, constipation, secondary testing, and then the uh, fourth step in the treatment. Primary assessment it include the history of the uh, defecation and abdominal examination and general manifestation. The primary assessment may include also the anoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, and clonoscopy, plain X-ray, small bowel series, barium enema, abdominal and pelvic ultrasound, CT or MRI, and the laboratory testing to exclude the endocrine causes of constipation. The primary assessment can reveal a cause to be treated with a trial of conservative treatment with high fiber diet or high flow diet and exercise for a few months to be started before proceeding to specific uh, tests. The primary test for constipation include bowel, uh, balloon evacuation, uh, colonic transit time, and the anorectal manometry. The, these three main primary tests generally categorize the constipation into motility disorders and the evacuation disorders. The defecography can reveal perineal descent, non-relaxing puberectalis, rectocele, prolapse intersusception, sigmoidocele, or enterocele. This is a, mo uh, a normal series of defecography. This is at risk during squeeze, and this is during evacuation. This is anterior outbouching rectocele. This is also an anterior rectocele in defecography. This intersusception. The secondary test for constipation include colonic transit time using radioactive, uh, radio-opaque material or, radio or radioactive material. The normal transit constipation in IBS and the slow transit constipation may be right-sided inertia, left-sided total colonic inertia or pelvic outlet energy or obstruction. This is the radio-opaque marker, still in the right side and just two in uh, the left side. The secondary test include also rectal sensation and compliance and the endorectal manometry, the endorectal ultrasound, static and dynamic MRI, and the endofunctional luminal imaging probe, the endoflip. This is the MRI, the focography dynamic MRI. Now we will shift to the, uh, the diagnosis of chronic constipation in our, in our unit, colorectal unit in Qasr Laini Hospital by the, uh, using the dynamic endoanal ultrasound, which is the echodophocography. This echodophocography uh, is done through the 3D endoanal ultrasound. This is the probe. The crest, there is a crystal rotating 360 degrees all over the uh, 6 cm length of this cap. It starts from the anal verge to the tip of the 6 cm. And at last it will give me a cube like this. The endoanal ultrasound will represent the level of the lower anal canal, which is the level of the external anal sphincter only. The level of the mid anal canal, this is the external anal sphincter, which is white, and this is the gray in the internal anal sphincter. Then the sling of the buprectalis at the level of the upper part of the mid anal canal. The echodophocography or the 3D dynamic endoanal ultrasound is done when the patient is in the left lateral position and the probe is introduced to the lower rectum for 6 to 7 cm from the anal verge and the images are acquired by four automatic scans and analyzed in axial and the three midline longitudinal planes. The scan one, the probe is inserted for 6 cm from the anal verge. The scan will uh, scan the lower rectum, anal rectal junction and the anal canal at rest. Uh, the aim of this uh, scan is to detect any anatomical abnormality in the anal sphincter or muscle injury. Scan number two is also six centimeter from the anal verge and we will uh, do at uh, the scan at rest and at straining. In the, uh, in the first 15 seconds, the patient is asked to, uh, not, uh, to, to relax. During the, uh, the next 20 seconds, the patient is straining. 
the last 15 seconds is done at rest. Uh, the aim of this study or this scan is to evaluate the movement of the buprectalis during the evacuation to detect if there is a paradoxical contraction of the buprectalis or the anal sphincter. Scan 3, the probe will be introduced for 7 cm from the anal verge. It will be done at rest then at, uh, uh, at during the squeal and, uh, and then at rest. The probe is introduced for, uh, to 7 cm. The, here we detect in rectal invagination to detect the rectal prolapse if it, if it present. Scan 4, like uh, scan 2 and 3, but we inject about 120 or 130 or 180 milli gel into the rectum to demonstrate the uh, pelvic floor and the uh, anorectal junction or anal canal. In the axial plane, this is the puprectalis during rest. We measure from the uh, internal border of the probe, this is the internal border of the probe, to the midline posterior. This angle during rest. If it's uh, become more wide during uh, the contraction of the, uh, during edification, the buprectalis uh, contracts. So in this case, this is anismus. Here, this is uh, an anterior outpouching in the 3D ultrasound, this is a rectocele, this is grade 3 rectocele, grade 1 rectocele, grade 2, grade 3. During the examination, if I detect more than two, uh, uh, two walls, this is uh, wall number 1, this wall number 2, this is intersusception. This is also intersusception, anterior, posterior, uh, lateral and circumferential.